After my sister stole my boyfriend, she showed up pregnant at my wedding, begging for help. Now she wants to move in with us, and my husband is considering it. You know those moments that are supposed to be the best day of your life? The ones you've dreamt of since you were a little girl? That was my wedding day. I was floating on a cloud of joy, about to marry Jack, the love of my life. We had a small, intimate ceremony planned with just close friends and family. The venue was perfect, the weather was gorgeous, and I was happier than I'd ever been. Then she showed up. My sister Emma and I have had a strained relationship for as long as I can remember. Growing up, she was always the golden child, the one who could do no wrong. I, on the other hand, was the rebellious one, the troublemaker. The rift between us widened when she stole my boyfriend in college. Jason and I had been together for two years and I thought we were solid. Then one day, I walked in on them together. It was the ultimate betrayal and it took me years to get over it. I hadn't spoken to Emma in three years, not since she and Jason had gotten together. They had broken up a year ago and I'd heard rumours that she'd fallen on hard times. But I didn't care. She was no longer a part of my life. Or so I thought. As I stood at the altar, looking into Jack's eyes, I felt like nothing could ruin this moment. But then, I saw the commotion at the back of the venue. Guests were whispering and turning to look at the entrance. My heart sank as I followed their gazes and saw Emma standing there, looking dishevelled and heavily pregnant. Please, I need to talk to you, she said, her voice breaking. She looked desperate, tears streaming down her face. I have nowhere else to go. Jack squeezed my hand, a silent question in his eyes. I didn't know what to do. This was my wedding day. How could she show up like this? My mind was racing. Was this some sort of twisted revenge? But the look on her face seemed genuine. She looked broken. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my voice steady. Emma, this is not the time or place. We'll talk later. Please, I need help, she sobbed. I don't have anyone else. The weight of her words hung in the air. The guests were silent, watching this unexpected drama unfold. Jack, ever the kind-hearted man, stepped in. Let's get her inside and see what's going on, he said softly. We'll figure this out. I nodded, feeling numb. My perfect day was unravelling before my eyes. As Emma was led inside, I caught glimpses of sympathetic faces among the guests. I wanted to scream to tell them she didn't deserve their pity, but I kept my composure, focusing on Jack's reassuring presence. We moved the ceremony indoors to a private room, away from the prying eyes. Emma sat down, her hands cradling her swollen belly. She looked exhausted, as if she hadn't slept in days. What's going on, Emma? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. She took a deep breath, her eyes red from crying. Jason left me. I'm eight months pregnant and I have nowhere to go. I was hoping, I was hoping you could help me. The room was silent. I felt a surge of anger. This was the same sister who had betrayed me, who had taken away the man I thought I loved. And now she was here, asking for help on my wedding day. The audacity was staggering. Why should I help you? I asked, my voice shaking. After everything you've done. Emma's face crumpled and she started sobbing again. I know I've hurt you. I know I've made mistakes. But please, I'm desperate. I have no one else. Jack put his arm around me, his touch soothing. Let's just hear her out, he said gently. We can decide what to do after that. I wanted to protest, to tell him that this was a mistake, but I could see the concern in his eyes, and I knew he was right. We needed to understand the full story before making any decisions. As Emma recounted her tale of woe, I felt a mixture of anger, pity and confusion. She had been living with Jason until he left her for someone else, leaving her with no job, no home and a baby on the way. She had nowhere else to turn, and in her desperation she had come to me, hoping for forgiveness and a place to stay. I looked at Jack his face thoughtful. He was always the compassionate one, always willing to help those in need. But this was different. This was my sister, the source of so much pain in my life. Could I really find it in my heart to help her? And if I did, what would that mean for my relationship with Jack and our future together? The questions swirled in my mind as we sat there, the weight of the decision pressing down on me. The next few hours were a blur. The wedding reception went on without us, our guests trying to make the best of a suddenly awkward situation. 
Jack and I remained with Emma in the small private room, discussing what to do. Emma's story tugged at my heart, but the bitterness from her betrayal was hard to swallow. She talked about how Jason had charmed her and then discarded her when he found out she was pregnant. She painted a picture of a lonely, frightened woman with no one to turn to. I know I don't deserve your help, Emma said, her voice cracking, but I don't know what else to do, I'm scared. Jack looked at me, his eyes full of empathy. We can't just leave her like this, he said softly. She needs us. I wanted to argue, to remind him of all the pain she had caused, but his words struck a chord. Despite everything, Emma was still my sister. She was carrying a child, my future niece or nephew. Could I really turn my back on her? We need to talk, I said to Jack, standing up. Alone. He nodded and followed me into the hallway, leaving Emma to rest. As soon as the door closed behind us, I let out a frustrated sigh. Jack, this is a disaster. She's ruined our wedding day. How can you even think about helping her? He took my hands in his, his touch calming but firm. I know this is hard, but she's in a terrible situation. And she's family. We can't ignore that. But what about us? I asked, my voice trembling. This is supposed to be our time, our start as a married couple. How can we do that with her living under our roof? Jack sighed, rubbing the back of his neck. I understand your feelings, believe me but I also think we need to show some compassion. We can set boundaries, make it clear that this is temporary until she gets back on her feet. I stared at him, torn between my lingering resentment and the love and respect I had for him. Jack was right. We couldn't just abandon her, but I also knew this wouldn't be easy. OK, I said finally. We can help her, but we need to set some ground rules. She needs to understand that this is temporary, and that she can't disrupt our lives any more than she already has. Jack nodded, relief evident on his face. Agreed. We'll make it clear from the start. We returned to the room where Emma was sitting, looking small and defeated. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come. Emma, you can stay with us, I said, my voice steady. But this is temporary. You need to find a job and a place of your own as soon as possible, and you need to respect our space and our relationship. Emma nodded, tears streaming down her face. Thank you. I promise I won't be a burden. I'll do whatever it takes. The next few days were a whirlwind of adjustments. Emma moved into our spare room, and Jack and I tried to settle into married life with an unexpected house guest. It was awkward to say the least. The tension was palpable, and I could feel my resentment simmering beneath the surface. Emma tried to help around the house, but her presence was a constant reminder of the past. Every time I saw her, I couldn't help but think about Jason and the pain she had caused me. Jack did his best to mediate, but I knew this was taking a toll on him as well. One evening, as we were sitting down for dinner, Emma brought up the topic of looking for work. I've been applying to jobs all day, she said, forcing a smile. Hopefully I'll hear back from someone soon. That's good, Jack said, trying to sound encouraging. The sooner you can get back on your feet, the better. I nodded not trusting myself to speak. I wanted to believe she was sincere, but a part of me couldn't shake the feeling that she was manipulating us. After all, she had done it before. As the weeks passed, the strain in our household grew. Emma's job search seemed to be going nowhere, and her presence was becoming more and more intrusive. She would monopolise Jack's time, asking for advice and help with various tasks. I felt like an outsider in my own home, and it was driving a wedge between Jack and me. One night, after another heated argument about Emma, I found myself alone in our bedroom, tears streaming down my face. I couldn't go on like this. Something had to change. Jack found me sitting on the edge of the bed, my head in my hands. He sat down beside me, wrapping his arm around my shoulders. Hey, he said softly. We'll get through this, I promise. I looked up at him, my eyes red and swollen. I don't know if I can do this, Jack. It's too much. He sighed, pulling me close. I know it's hard, but we need to stay strong together. Well, figure this out. His words were comforting, but I couldn't shake the feeling of dread. I knew things couldn't continue like this. We needed a plan, a way to move forward without letting Emma's presence destroy our marriage. The next day, I decided to confront Emma. I found her in the kitchen, preparing breakfast. 
She looked up as I entered, a wary expression on her face. Emma, we need to talk, I said, my tone firm. This situation isn't working. You need to find a job and move out as soon as possible. She looked down, her shoulders slumping. I'm trying, really. It's just hard. Ah, I understand that, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. But you need to make more of an effort. This is affecting my marriage, and I can't let that happen. Emma nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I promise I'll try harder. I don't want to be a burden. As I left the kitchen, I couldn't shake the feeling that things were about to get even more complicated. Emma had promised to try harder, but I wasn't sure if she was capable of changing, and I wasn't sure if I was capable of forgiving her. Days turned into weeks, and Emma's presence in our home began to feel like a dark cloud hanging over us. Despite her promises, her job search yielded no results. Every day she grew more comfortable and less motivated, while the strain on my marriage became unbearable. Jack remained patient and understanding, always encouraging Emma to keep trying. I admired his kindness, but it also fueled my frustration. I felt like I was losing him to my sister, the same way I had lost Jason years ago. The resentment that I had tried so hard to bury was resurfacing with a vengeance. One evening, after another tense dinner where Emma dominated the conversation, I decided I needed to speak to Jack alone. We retreated to our bedroom, closing the door behind us. Jack, we need to talk, I said, my voice trembling with barely contained anger. He looked at me with concern. What's wrong? What's wrong? Emma is what's wrong. She's taken over our lives and it's destroying us. I can't take it anymore. Jack sighed, running a hand through his hair. I know it's been hard, but she's trying. She just needs a bit more time. Time? I scoffed. How much more time are we supposed to give her? She's not even looking for jobs anymore. She spends all day watching TV and expecting us to cater to her every need. Jack frowned. That's not true. She's been applying online. No, Jack, I interrupted. She hasn't. I checked her browser history. She's not doing anything. She's manipulating us, just like she always does. He looked taken aback, his eyes narrowing. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? Because I thought you could see it for yourself, but you're so busy playing the hero that you can't see what she's doing to us. Jack was silent for a moment, then he spoke softly. I didn't realise. I'll talk to her. The next day Jack confronted Emma. I stayed in the bedroom not wanting to witness the confrontation. I could hear their raised voices through the door, Emma's protests, and Jack's stern responses. It was a relief to finally have my feelings validated, but I knew this was only the beginning of the end. Emma was furious, her usual manipulative charm giving way to anger and defensiveness. I can't believe you went through my stuff, she accused me later that day when Jack was at work. You're spying on me. I'm protecting my home and my marriage, I shot back. You've done nothing but take advantage of our kindness. Her eyes flashed with anger. You've always been so self-righteous. You think you're better than me, don't you? I stood my ground, refusing to let her bait me. This isn't about me. It's about you taking responsibility for your life. You need to find a job and move out. This isn't your home. Emma glared at me, but there was a flicker of something else in her eyes. Fear, perhaps, or desperation. She turned and stormed out of the room, slamming the door behind her. That evening, Jack and I sat down to discuss our next steps. We need a deadline, I said. Emma needs to know that she can't stay here indefinitely. Jack nodded, his expression grim. I agree. I think giving her a month to find a job and a place to stay is reasonable. A month? I echoed, feeling a pang of disappointment. It seemed too long, but it was a start. Jack took my hand. I know it's not ideal, but it's fair. We have to give her a chance. Reluctantly, I agreed. We informed Emma of the deadline and she didn't take it well. She cried, begged and even tried to guilt trip us, but Jack stood firm. I could see the toll it was taking on him, but I knew it was necessary. The days dragged on and Emma's behaviour became increasingly erratic. She alternated between apologetic and confrontational, making it clear that she wasn't planning to leave quietly. The tension in the house was unbearable. One night, I overheard a conversation between Jack and Emma that made my blood run cold. I was coming downstairs for a glass of water when I heard their voices in the living room. You don't really want me to leave, do you? Emma was saying, 
her voice low and seductive. Emma, stop, Jack replied, sounding exasperated. This isn't fair to me or to your sister. But you're the one who's been so kind to me, she persisted. I know you care about me. Of course I care, Jack said, but not in the way you're implying. I'm married to your sister and I love her. This needs to stop. I stepped into the room, my heart pounding. What the hell is going on here? Emma looked at me, her eyes wide with surprise. Nothing, we were just talking. Talking, I repeated, my voice rising. It sounded like you were trying to seduce my husband. Jack stood up, his face pale. It wasn't like that. She was just... I heard everything, I interrupted. Emma, you need to leave. Now. Emma's face twisted with anger. You can't kick me out. I have nowhere to go. You should have thought of that before you tried to ruin my marriage again, I shot back. Pack your things and get out. Jack tried to calm me down, but I was beyond reasoning. Emma had crossed a line, and I wasn't going to let her stay another minute. She stormed off to her room, and I could hear her throwing things into a suitcase. Jack turned to me, his eyes filled with regret. I'm sorry, I didn't realise how bad it was. I felt a pang of guilt for putting him in this position, but I knew it had to be done. It's not your fault. She needs to go. Within the hour, Emma was gone. She left without saying goodbye, slamming the door behind her. The house felt strangely quiet, the tension dissipating like a heavy fog lifting. Jack and I sat on the couch, holding each other. We'll get through this, he whispered, together. I nodded, feeling a mixture of relief and sadness. Emma was gone, but the damage she had caused would take time to heal. Our marriage had been tested, but we had come out stronger. As we sat there, I couldn't help but wonder what the future held. Emma had always been a part of my life, for better or worse. Now, with her gone, I felt a strange emptiness. But I also felt hopeful, ready to move forward and rebuild our lives without her shadow hanging over us. Emma's abrupt departure left a palpable silence in the house. The tension that had built up over the weeks began to dissipate and for the first time since our wedding, Jack and I could breathe freely. Yet, I couldn't shake the lingering sadness and unresolved emotions her presence had stirred up. A few days later, I received a call from our mother. Her voice was strained, a mixture of worry and accusation. What happened with Emma? she demanded. She showed up here in tears, saying you threw her out. I sighed, realising that facing my family's scrutiny was inevitable. Mom, she was causing too much stress. She tried to come between Jack and me. I had no choice. I can't believe you, she snapped. She's pregnant and alone. How could you be so heartless? Heartless, I repeated, anger rising. Where was this concern when she betrayed me? She hasn't changed, Mom. She's still manipulating everyone around her. My mother fell silent, and I wondered if she was reflecting on Emma's history of deceit. She needs help, not judgment. She finally said, her voice softer. And I need peace, I replied firmly. Jack and I deserve to start our marriage without constant drama. We tried to help her, but she took advantage of us. The conversation ended on a strained note, but I felt a sense of closure. I had stood my ground, defending my marriage and my sanity. It was time to move on, to focus on rebuilding the trust and happiness that Emma had nearly destroyed. Jack and I spent the next few weeks reconnecting. We went on long walks, had deep conversations and laughed together, rediscovering the joy that had initially brought us together. Slowly, the shadow of Emma's intrusion began to fade. One evening, as we sat on the porch watching the sunset, Jack turned to me with a thoughtful expression. I've been thinking about everything that's happened, he said, and I realise now that we need to set stronger boundaries, not just with Emma, but with anyone who tries to interfere in our lives. I nodded, feeling a surge of love and appreciation for him. You're right, we need to protect what we have. Exactly, he said, taking my hand. I love you, and I'll always choose you. No one can come between us. His words were a balm to my wounded heart. We had faced a significant challenge, and we had emerged stronger, more united. Emma's departure had forced us to confront our vulnerabilities, and reinforce our commitment to each other. A few weeks later, I received a letter from Emma. It was unexpected, and my hands trembled as I opened it. Her handwriting was shaky, 
the words filled with a mix of apology and desperation. Dear sis, I know I've hurt you, and I'm truly sorry. I never intended to cause so much pain. I was desperate and scared, and I didn't know where else to turn. I see now that I've been selfish and manipulative. I've decided to move to a new city to start fresh. I need to learn to stand on my own and be a better person for my child. I hope one day you can forgive me. Thank you for giving me a chance, even if I didn't deserve it. Love, Emma. Tears filled my eyes as I read her words. For the first time, I felt a glimmer of hope that she might truly change. Maybe the shock of being kicked out had forced her to confront her own behaviour and its consequences. I shared the letter with Jack, who wrapped me in a comforting embrace. Do you believe her? He asked gently. I want to, I admitted. I really do. But I think we need to focus on us for now. Jack nodded. We can keep an open heart while still protecting ourselves. Life began to settle into a new normal. The house was peaceful, and Jack and I were more connected than ever. The experience had taught us the importance of boundaries, communication, and unwavering support for each other. One afternoon, as we were tidying up the house, Jack found an old photo album tucked away in a drawer. We sat down together, flipping through the pages, reminiscing about our journey. There were pictures of our first date, holidays spent together, and moments of pure happiness. We've come a long way, Jack said, smiling. We have, I agreed, and we'll keep moving forward. Our life wasn't perfect, but it was ours. We had faced betrayal, manipulation and heartache, but we had emerged stronger and more united. Emma's presence had been a test, one that had threatened to tear us apart, but in the end, it had only solidified our bond. As I looked at Jack, I felt a deep sense of gratitude for his love, his patience and his unwavering support. We had weathered the storm together and now we could finally enjoy the calm that followed. To my readers, thank you for following our story. Relationships are complex and often challenging, but with love, communication and resilience, we can overcome even the toughest obstacles. Have you ever had to set boundaries with a loved one to protect your own peace? How did you handle it? I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences.